Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, and today I'm taking a look at a really interesting prototype Spanish rifle from right after World War II. This is a CB-51, which, interestingly, is a designation that tells you very little just by itself, because there are at least two other CB-51 rifles that I'm aware of that are totally different from this one, mechanically. Uh, what that designation does tell you is the, this was designed or, or made in 1951, and the CB stands for Calzada y Bayo. The designer, or at least the guy whose name got associated with these guns, is a Spanish artillery officer by the name, by the name of Joaquin de la Calzada y Bayo. And he was originally posted to the La Coruña arsenal in 1943, where he presumably worked through World War II, and then he stayed on afterwards as an arms designer. I really don't know much about the guy himself, but I have, we have this rifle in front of us here, and I've gotten pictures of several other uh, guns that were on display at the La Coruña uh, Museum that are also CB-51s and a few other designations that are clearly experimental guns, but different ones. So what this gun is, it's obviously, and you'll see this when we look at it up close, it's heavily influenced by the M1 Garand. It has an op-rod gas system, despite the Mauser looking front end. It's got a gas port up here and an op-rod coming down the side of the barrel, a two-lug rotating bolt, very much like the M1. However, it does have a stripper clip guide up here, and it has these rather unusual size magazines. I can't confirm it because it's not it's not marked on the gun anywhere, but I believe this is actually chambered for the 8x33 or 8mm Kurtz cartridge uh, that was originally used in the German Sturmgewehr rifles. Uh, the Spanish, several of the, the design engineers from the Mauser company ended up working in Spain right after World War II as arms designers. The Spanish were interested, as were a lot of other people, um, in the, the new sort of intermediate assault rifle cartridge, and they developed a number of guns in 8 Kurtz. In fact, one of the other CB-51 rifles at, on display at La Coruña um, used basically what looked like modified original STG magazines. These are shorter. I suspect these are somewhere between a 15 and a 20 round capacity. And then this rifle also has a short magazine that only holds, I believe, five rounds. That's a, actually a flush fitting mag in this gun. So there are a number of interesting mechanical elements to this that we'll take a look at. Um, but just as a general overview, this is one of the many guns that the Spanish military was tinkering with um, after World War II. Everyone was kind of looking at new guns. A lot, of, a lot of countries, well most countries, didn't yet have a standard issue semi-auto. And so a lot of them were looking at the developments that had arisen during the war especially you're talking about the major combatant nations, Russia, Germany, the United States, fielding pretty much all new semi-auto rifles. And then these smaller military forces, countries like Spain, are, are looking to take advantage of all the R&D that the big countries did and spin off their own, uh, what they see as the best, uh, best versions of these new semi-autos to adopt. Now, ultimately, this platform didn't go anywhere. What the Spanish ended up adopting was, and developing, was the Setme rifle, which went through a number of iterations. If you take a look at uh, the blog post I have on some of the other CB-51 designated rifles, you can see a development towards the Setme rifle um, in some areas there. So anyway, why don't we go ahead and take a closer look at this one. I'll show you how it operates and, and a couple of the neat features, like this thing. All right, so we've got this all disassembled, pulled it out of the stock. So there's actually really not much going on in the stock. So we'll set that aside. Handguard, same kind of thing. Uh, clearly handmade. In total, 12 of these guns were manufactured by La Coruña. Um, they were all, unfortunately, deactivated according to Spanish legal requirement. So two holes drilled into the barrel. Uh, there is actually one other example of this gun in the United States. It's in the same condition, unfortunately. This was required in order to be able to sell the guns in Spain, um, which was done. They were taken out of the, the factory collection to be sold, and that was one of the requirements, unfortunately. So that's why it looks like that today. Now, the action on this, very, very, well, obviously taken from the M1. 
So we have an op rod, which connects up to a gas port right here in the barrel. This is a threaded plug. You can take that off in order to have access to the gas port to clean it. That pin is what holds the gas uh, port, this component, in place on the barrel. And then we have our gas piston right here. That comes back like so. And then on the underside of that, this was actually driven by a pair of recoil springs right there. Those sit in right there and snap into place. So you've got two of these, this matched pair of guide rods. That gives you spring tension on the bolt carrier and op rod assembly. Pushes it forward. You can see we have a stripper clip guide up here. So you have detachable magazines, but these can this can also be reloaded via stripper clip. Now, in theory, the next step in disassembly would be to pull out this cross pin here, and then this whole trigger and magazine well assembly would pivot out of the gun. Again, inspired clearly by the M1. You can see that this hammer and hammer spring arrangement is very similar to the M1. Um, just someone took the M1 and figured, let's try making a, a, small, a handy little intermediate caliber carbine out of it. This is sort of like the eight millimeter Spanish Mini 14, really. The markings on here are pretty cool. Um, this is abbreviated, but it is Mosqueton Automatic caliber 792, model CB51. Now, that Cal 792 tells us that this is an 8mm gun. However, it doesn't describe exactly what cartridge. I am assuming that it's the standard 8x33, because I know the Spanish did work with that cartridge. It is, however, possible that it could be a proprietary 8mm cartridge. 8x30, 8x35, any number of things like that. But I think it's probably the standard 8 Kurtz. Now, one, one distinctive element, um, unique element here, is this grip safety. This has to be depressed in order to fire the gun, and it also acts as the bolt hold open. So you can see this lug right here. When I squeeze the grip safety, that lug moves up and down. When the bolt is locked back, that lug grabs it. And in order to release the bolt, you have to depress the grip safety. That drops the lug and allows the bolt to go forward. So, as I showed you, these rifles were made with both short, flush-fitting five-round magazines and extended, larger-capacity magazines. I don't know exactly what this is, but I suspect it's 15 to 20 rounds. Now, one of the interesting details, nerdy details here, is that the followers are different. These short five-round mags did not use the standard follower. Um, and, by the way, we have a couple other of these large mags, and they all, all of their followers look the same. The reason for this, I believe, is that they're copying Sturmgewehr magazine components. The floor plate looks the same, and this follower looks the same. Now, if you look at this witness area, as I push the follower down, you can see it move. This tells us that the follower for this magazine is at least like this long, which is what you would expect from a Sturmgewehr magazine follower. It had very long legs in the front and back, which allowed, they, they made sure that it didn't tilt uh, under full auto fire when it was feeding. However, if you're going to make a flush-fitting magazine, you can't have a follower that's longer than the actual magazine body. It simply won't fit. So what they did on these was make a separate follower. You can see I have to push it all the way down to the bottom before it shows up in the witness hole there. Or the, not the witness hole, the, the locking lug hole. So this five-round magazine um, is done that way so that you can actually fit five rounds in a flush magazine because the standard stock Sturmgewehr follower wouldn't allow that to work. One of the other interesting details here, you saw when we had the gun disassembled that there were two lines of markings, one small one and then one larger one. What's funny here is that the larger line of markings is actually hidden underneath the stock. 
I suspect, because this is the only one of these rifles, there were originally 12 made, and this is the only one that has two lines of, of designation markings. And it kind of seems like this was probably the first one of the batch that got engraved. And the guy went through and did the engraving and then dropped it into the stock and kind of went, ah, crap, the stock hides all that marking. So he came back and he did a smaller line up here where it would be visible. And then all the subsequent rifles just have this smaller line. Neat little you know, detail that gives you some insight into the foibles of a, a experimental rifle production. Now the most interesting control on this rifle is this. It's a grip safety built into the wrist of the rifle, and it does, it functions as a grip safety. Unless this is depressed, you can't fire the rifle. What's interesting is that this is also the bolt release. So kind of like shades of the HKP7 right there. When I lock the bolt open, like so, bolt's open, it's locked in place. I could use the stripper clip guide to reload my magazine from here, but pulling the, the bolt back, bolt handle back, does nothing. It's still stuck in there. Well, there's a little catch connected to this grip safety. When I depress the grip safety, the bolt drops forward. So that's an easy way to uh, avoid having an extra control around for the, the bolt release. Beyond that, fairly standard features on this rifle. We have our rear sight here. This is graduated out to 500 yards, or 500 meters, I'm sorry. And then the hardware on the front of the gun is all pretty basic Mauser hardware. Looks very familiar. Um, interestingly, it has a cleaning rod in it. However, it's a really short cleaning rod. Obviously not as long as the barrel. Uh, I believe this is there to serve two purposes. One is that it acts like a stacking swivel so that a couple of guys can you know, tent their rifles up and avoid getting them down in the dirt. The other thing is that this is hollow and threaded at both at this end, and of course it's threaded at that end. And I believe the idea would have been you get three guys, or maybe four guys, but I think three would do it, to uh, all pull their cleaning rods out, thread all three cleaning rods together, and then you have one full length rod that all three guys can use to clean their rifles. Just one little interesting side effect of this grip safety. Um, I'm noticing that when I'm trying to lock the bolt open, or cycle it, lock it open, just to demonstrate on video, I have to kind of check myself that I'm not grasping that grip safety. Because it's really easy to grip it shut, and then try and lock the bolt open, and you can't. And something that occurs to me is when you're actually shooting, you would be holding this grip safety down, and when you fired the last round in the magazine, it would actually not lock open because you'd have just fired a round, so you'd be depressing the grip safety, and that would prevent it from locking open, which kind of defeats the purpose of having uh, the gun automatically lock open when you fire the last round. Uh, just interesting little thought that just occurred to me now while I'm doing the filming. You know, might explain why you didn't see something like this on a future uh, experimental or production Spanish rifle. Well, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. An interesting chance to look at what one of these, uh, you know, many potential branches of arms design was after World War II. So this one didn't go anywhere, but, you know, some others did. If you enjoyed this sort of video, please consider checking out my Patreon page and helping to support me there. A uh, $1 a month donation really can go a very long way to help me continue to be able to go out and find really interesting exotic guns like this and bring them to you guys. Thanks for watching.